A loss may not end a career, but a win definitely scales it up several times over. Alex Pereira is finding that out for himself after the newly minted UFC middleweight champion faces his first title defense, and it's coming right after his successful takeover of Israel. The current middleweight champion literally had the year of champions. His 4-0 record in UFC was crowned by a big one this time, a victory over Israel Adesanya. His five-round knockout has lended him more competition with all the newer contenders gunning for his position. The UFC standard at 185 pounds, fifth and final round. The Adesanya camp is also going strong, with calls for a rematch gaining steam as we inch closer to his comeback date. Would a hat trick do the trick? Or can Izzy redeem himself on the third try? It all depends on who Alex chooses to fight next. If he moves up a ladder, then Adesanya will have a harder time getting back at the middleweight champion. This is because the UFC works on a scoring system to line up the competition. It would be a hard sell to ask the promotion to match up a vast difference in points between two contenders. So the UFC has big skin in the game, and Dana's not going to give up a chance to make some financially savvy moves. For now, this means hyping up the Poatan train. Strike while the iron's hot, right? Going by the point system, Adesanya's not out of the race yet. Leave aside the scores and who won how many games, and the rivalry's still pretty hot in the market. For one, there's a history that's easily marketable for UFC. Pereira was 2-0 over Adesanya in their previous cage, kickboxing. Their association continued in MMA when Alex got one over the stylebender, taking their total record to 3-0 for Alex. Jump to the present day and there's a new kid on the block, with Alex catching Israel on the chin with a round 5 victory. Their history goes back longer than some pro careers in the UFC even. The Brazilian is now the main card contender and he's doing the work of champions, helping his compatriot make it big in the UFC. After all, Poetan is playing a mentorship position in his current fight. The middleweight champion's back in his home country, coaching teammate and former light heavyweight champion for his spot against Jamahal Hill at UFC 283. Just as he's helping Glover set the mark shooting for the light heavyweight title, he'll also be helping field contenders for his upcoming defense. There are plenty of them vying for a position, and I'm sure all of Brazil is anxious to see the national hero back in action. Just as his rise to the top was absolutely meteoric, the expectations have also risen with it. He's an example and model to many in Brazil who are hopeful of leaving their mark on the global MMA stage. It doesn't come without some tough battles though, both inside and outside the cage. A few other battles lined up for the middleweight champ. I keep jumping back to his last fight against Israel. Like a raw, unchoreographed dance, Pereira barely missed a left hook, playing footsie with the best of middleweight. Big body kicks, it was knockout entertainment for sure. After round one, the betting odds were a massive 1,600 points in favor of Poetan. That alone tells you how the odds and the money bags both are staked on the line for his next fight. Suffering from success, someone? Only his return match can tell us that, but it's a pretty big fight already to keep your head on the ball and not let the noose get to you. Particularly now, as the division's going through a major shakeup. The UFC's middleweight division is changing quickly. Pereira Izzy may have been a changing of the guards simply because it opened up the door to a lot of people who want to fight the new champion. Alex hasn't been tested against as many fighters as Izzy is. Perhaps that is why there's a lot of mystery and bold claims entering the conversation about Poetan's capabilities. There's also a hint of awe and wonder because you don't know you've gone against Alex until you haven't. And that's something less than five UFC fighters can still lay claim to. So, with this passing of the baton, it's hard to predict who Alex will defend next. Even his potential competitor, Robert Whitaker, is unsure how things will move on and what the UFC's plans for March or April will be at this point. The former champion, who's 24-6 in MMA to date, has a more experienced view of the division than the current champion. That's just the nature of championships. But it does give us some useful insights. Not to mention, a battle between the new and relatively old guard in middleweight, it might be possible that Poetan's return to the octagon will be against the Grim Reaper. 
The Aussie's also been endorsed by Poeton himself as one of his potential competitors. But rivalries run long and deep in the UFC, and a rematch with Izzy is looming huge. Everyone loves a revenge saga, right? That is why a fourth Alex vs Izzy is almost a done deal. While there's a lot that can go wrong before a fight goes on the floor, a recent announcement by the UFC confirms that a rematch is scheduled for UFC 287 on April 8th. This update came from the very top of UFC, with Dana White confirming the rematch's initial details. Now, next up, April 8th, UFC 287, here's the lineup. In the main event, middleweight champion, new middleweight champion, Alex Pajeda, puts his title on the line in his rematch against former champ Israel Adesanya. Whoa, I am all for it. But with all respect to the former champion, I don't think the rest of the division is going to miss out on fighting Alex so easily. This is why the rematch is still in the early stages, and I wouldn't be surprised if the UFC switched up this matchup several times. It's a battle for survival, and the UFC is full of pro survivors. Whatever the case, Alex's recent domination has certainly spiked interest in competition and among fans. The middleweight division under Alex is already looking much more exciting, even before Poetan's first title defense. The Brazilian has brought back weakness to the cage in a good way. You see, the last stylebender was a spectacular force in its prime. He was so good, and he made it look so easy, that you were hard-pressed to find a flaw, a weakness, a risky move out of place. Israel Adesanya is what he knew and thought he was, the best middleweight on planet Earth. With Poetan, though, things are entering a different age. This is a guy who's actually a force to be reckoned with, i.e. you can consider going up against him without it seeming like a leap of faith. That he'll surprise you later with his raw talent and determined stance is another thing. The key thing is that he's brought the element of surprise back into the game. Watching an all-out champion take on anyone and everything loses your attention after a while. After a while, you just expected the stylebender to take it to home base. It was only a question of whether he'd finish in a dynamic style or get a decision in his favor. Why even watch then? Let me tell you why. Watch for the electric energy Poetin has brought back to the 185-pound division. It remains unsure whether Whitaker or Izzy will make the final cut for Alex's first title defense. Plus, the concessions made by the stylebender were too glaring to ignore. He gave up his ground and allowed Poetan to take him out by coming in on the inside. His defense game was weak. These are all things that Whitaker can take to heart in the potential matchup. Whoever comes out of the opposite corner at UFC 287, prepare to be surprised by Poetan at least. See you in the next one.